Hi, my name is Jim Jordan. I'm a friend of Joseph Newman's. He wanted me to read a letter to you folks about something that I think is very important to us all. This letter is from Evan Sule Jr. My name is Evan R. Sule Jr. I have known of energy machine inventor Joseph Newman and assisted him with public relations for 25 years. Until Hurricane Katrina came, my home of origin was New Orleans, where my great-great-grandfather, Colonel George Sule, founded Sule College, which became the oldest business college in the South. In 1987, Hurricane Gilbert entered the Caribbean Basin, and it appeared that the Gulf Coast was its next target. At that time, Joseph Newman traveled to New Orleans from his home in Loosedale, Mississippi, to warn the people that the city was facing God's wrath. He believed that unless the people of New Orleans came together from different religions and prayed as a unison of one on a regular basis, God would have sent Hurricane Gilbert to destroy the city. Shortly after Joseph Newman arrived in New Orleans and publicly announced his warning to the mayor, Archbishop Philip Hannon asked the people of all faiths to come together in St. Louis Cathedral, the oldest Catholic church in North America, and to pray that Hurricane Gilbert would spare New Orleans. As it turned out, Hurricane Gilbert, a storm with the lowest barometric pressure on record in the Atlantic region, with winds over 200 miles an hour, slammed into a sparsely populated area of the Yucatan Peninsula. Three months later, I was on the Isle of Cozumel, where I saw Gilbert's destruction firsthand. Imagine the concrete of a half city block long highway, dug up and thrown 100 feet inland, away from the beach as though such concrete was made of plastic. That is the destruction I witnessed firsthand. Had the storm hit New Orleans, the destruction would have been catastrophic. Although some people prayed in St. Louis Cathedral before Gilbert, such prayer was short-lived. After Gilbert passed, people of varying faiths never came together again to pray, and thus God's request was ignored. Years later, Joseph Newman again warned that God would send another hurricane to New Orleans as punishment for the inhabitants failing to follow his simple first request. He continually warned me to move away from the city, but having lived there through five generations, it was not easy for my family to leave New Orleans. While living in Florida, Joseph Newman ha had an associate send hundreds of press releases to Gulf Coast news media, warning that God would soon come to collect from New Orleans with another devastating hurricane. Again, he urged the people of New Orleans to come together and pray in a unison of one, but such warnings went unheeded by the inhabitants of New Orleans. Late in August of 2005, Hurricane Katrina descended upon New Orleans and God's promise was kept. The city was virtually destroyed. Having lived through Hurricane Katrina and stayed in New Orleans for, for days afterwards, I believe that New Orleans has one, the New Orleans I once loved and remembered is forever gone. Joseph Newman has stated that he acts as a messenger of God. I would strongly recommend that such messages be taken very seriously. Signed, sincerely, Evan R. Sule, Jr. Okay, well, I thank Jim for reading that very important letter that Evan Sule wrote to you, the people, in truth. I hope you all think about what you just heard and listen to me very, very seriously. God has given me all the information I'm fixing to give to you. All the information I've got up on the internet, on the energy invention. The fact I've given a unified mechanical field theory. I have mechanically explained gravity, electricity, magnetism, wave and particle theory, light, the property of inertia. I have screamed it to you, the people, over these many years. This is my worship day again, and I got on a coat again because I want you to know I take this very serious. I'm not going to talk with any anger in my voice because I don't have to. God's anger is fixing to turn the earth upside down. There's nothing that I can say that's going to change that so that you'll have hope. God did tell me something in 1987 when he told me to start warning the world and I sent press releases all over the earth, spent $25,000 warning the world that all people should uh, show love toward one another. I showed mathematical proof that all seven major religions are tied together by more than 105 million to one. I have up on Google a site titled About God. You should take a look at it. I've screamed that to the people. The world didn't do nothing. 
just like Evan told you, they didn't do anything in New Orleans. I hope that what I show you, and I want you to realize something, what I'm fixing to show you may seem complicated to you. God has made all this stuff simple to me. I understood the essence of this when I was a boy, that what I'm fixing to show you. Now this is really tied to the property of inertia. This one is caused the destruction of the earth. I explain that if you look at my site up on Google, um, speed is power. I give you a unified mechanical field theory. Over 40 scientists have endorsed that. Dr. Swimmer, top mathematician at Arizona State University, signed a declaration. I was right by more than one trillion to one. World didn't do anything. Now that property of inertia is going to cause the destruction of the earth by what God's fixing to do to the earth. Now what I want to do is give you a demonstration that you can understand. I've tried to make it very simple. I'm going to shoot, have this represent a, the essence of a town. Now I've got it on a piece of plyboard. Now when I snatch this plyboard out from under it, all this stuff is going to fall down. Now I want you to picture this is the entire earth. Now if the earth flips 180 degrees like God says it's going to in the Bible, 180 degrees, and I'm going to show you how it's going to do it, everything sitting on the earth because of the property of inertia wishes to sit still. And when the earth does that, it spins out from under it. Everything's going to fall down just like this will fall down. If I get you to stand on a rug and let me come up there and snatch that rug, I'll put you on your behind. And you know what I'm saying is true. You doubt it, challenge somebody, you stand on a rug and let somebody jerk it. You end up on your behind. It's the laws of physics because your body stands in that one position. It doesn't want to be moved. So you pull, the person pulling the rug pulls your feet out from under you and you fall. That's why all the houses are gonna call, come down. They're built very ineffective. I'm going to show you how you should build a house when you know there's going to be earthquakes uh, occur and they wouldn't fall down. And I'll give you a demonstration of that and it's based on the property of inertia. Now with that, I'm going to pull this down and let you see it fall and how easy it is to get it to fall simply because all of this mess wishes to sit at that exact spot. If you pull the base of which it's standing on You'll put a lever point down here, and the laws of levers will apply. The taller something is, the more mass you have up in the air. And you pull that bottom point out, the law of levers is enacted, and that's why they will fall, and houses will fall. When God does this, I want you to visually see this is going to occur. And so if, with that, we'll do the experiment. All right, when I count to three, there's going to be the essence of an earthquake or the earth spinning around. One, two, three. Well, even then I pulled the nail out, uh, but the nail had it helped. All this would have fell down. That's a thin piece of wood, but you can see what happens. And if I pull this with my hand to show you what it'll do, that immediately falls, the earth will turn with such a tart, such a phenomenal tart, all this will be destroyed. And that's the way your earth will look when God turns the whole earth upside down. Now I'm going to try to explain to you how that you can save yourself by what I'm going to talk with you about and show you what you can do. I'll explain how houses can be built, what you should be in, and what you should get prepared for. Now this bucket represents a house that is built the way I say houses should be built, up in the air, with poles over here in four places, and you put a canopy that comes down with cables attaches to the house and supports it in midair. And the reason for this is very simple. It's the property of inertia. Now if I take a light mass, now this light mass here works totally opposite of what it does on a lever, on the laws of a lever. The longer you have a lever, now just like I can hold this with two fingers, if there's no weight on it, 
you put weight on this, and I can't hold it with two fingers because of the laws of a lever. That's what happens when a house starts bending over. When the earth starts pulling it over, it's the law of the lever, all the weight that's above that pivot point that's pulling on it. That's why it'll, those two by fours with two little nails toe nailed in at the bottom that I can snatch out with one finger. If you get, let me pull on one end of it, it'll come down like it's a spider web or something. And now I'm going to show you something. If this is light up here though, it will move with the motion of the system that's holding it. Now watch my hand as it moves left and right. This bucket will start moving with it. Now see, I'm not moving. Look at my hand. It's not moving very much. And look how much the bucket moves. And the bucket is very light. Now my hand isn't moving very much. All right, now, this is very light. I can hold this very easy like that. Now this weighs about 70 pounds that I'm fixing to pick up. I'm going to show you now. This won't move near that much with the same motion. This mass is a lot heavier. All right, now if I start moving this left and right, now I move my hand the same amount, and the bucket does not hardly even move. That's because of the property of inertia. Even if I pull that over here and I pull it back, it doesn't move much. Now if I move that my hand this way on this light system quickly like I was trying to do with that it starts throwing that little bucket way over it's the property of inertia now the same property if you sit it on the earth this light thing would turn over it would be harder to turn over than this if you put a rug under it if you put a rug on it and jerk it this would be harder to turn over than this because this is so light it will move with the bucket this is so heavy it wants to sit there so you pull the bottom out from under it that's why things will fall down i hope you can understand the demonstration that i'm showing you and that there's a world of difference and it's called the property of inertia okay now this represents the sun it's got a magnet in it so does the sun, has a great magnetic field. In fact, the stupid scientific community says it goes out so far they don't know where it goes. Well, it's quite obvious. It goes out and aligns with our galaxy's magnetic field, just like our galaxy's magnetic field goes out and aligns with the central body that all the galaxies ro rotate around. I put all this in my book in 1984. I covered it all in the 1976 uh, and 77. Now I put bobby pins up here I did all these experiments way back, thousands of them, thousands of them. I didn't do this by accident. To show you why, when God says in the Bible, uh, the earth is going to weave back and forth like a drunkard man. That's God's quote in Isaiah. I'm going to read it to you. Watch if I click these bobby pins, how long they'll vibrate. Imagine this being an earthquake, and these are planets away from the sun. Now watch how long that they vibrate. And there's an earthquake going on. As you see that vibration, keep going. There's still an earthquake going on. And you're trying to hang on. Everything's falling down off your shelves. Buildings are coming down. Tops of things are falling off. And you still got an earthquake going on. And just like God says, the earth is going to weave back and forth like a drunken man. And that's what that's doing, weaving back and forth. And you still got an earthquake going on. And you still got an earthquake going on. You know why? Because these barbie pins are metal. They got a north and south pole in them. They line up with the magnetic field coming from this that represents the sun, just like the planets do. And you still have an earthquake going on because they're just like a spider webs. Well, you go out and tr tr click one web on a spider web, just go bink, and the whole thing will start vibrating. And it'll take a minute or so before it'll stop. 
This is a spider web a million times more sensitive. These are still shaking. Now this represents the earth, so you can see what's going to happen. Now you can see this has a certain orientation, just like they know that our true axis has a certain orientation, and I have said consistently, used to build a globe, and, and I'd take a styrofoam globe like this and paint it with luminous paint. Get it lit. I'd put an axis through it here, and then I'd put a 11 and a half degrees, I'd put where the magnetic axis was, and I'd take a wire and bend it back around over here, over this axis. I didn't put any luminous paint, and I'd take people in a dark room, have them come in a dark room, and then I'd turn it by these wires that were coming from the magnetic field, bent here and bent there, over this axis, and I turned it. They see this aluminum shaft coming out here and here, and they see the globe, and they'd say that, I, I say, how am I turning this? And they say, you turning it by that shaft. Then I say, turn on the light. And when they turned on the light, I showed them it was a wire built, bent back at an 11 and a half degree angle. As, and that's what happens. Any magnetic field of a smaller body put in a bigger magnetic field is going to be warped. And that's just a scientific fact and it's basics. This stuff is easy for me. Now watch if I turn this over 180 degrees. Watch the earth turn over 180 degrees. and it sways around and comes out of its orbit. And you can see how this, this is. And these bobby pins have already came slap off of there. As I turn this thing over, this is what you could get the Earth to do. Now how would you like to be on this mass doing that? Now hopefully it's not going to be that bad. God just says he's going to turn it upside down. Now when God turns it back over, if I turn this back, you can see how that this wants to flip. Now this will happen all of a sudden at a high rate of speed. Now even now, if I don't move this, this will keep vibrating for a long period of time. So when the, God does this, it ain't going to just turn and stop. It's going to do just like this. <clears throat> it's going to keep vibrating because it's already interrupted that magnetic field. Now the earth is a, is a very heavy mass. <clears throat> now as a result of it, that heavy mass is going to keep vibrating that electromagnetic field for a long period of time. Now I used to ride all kind of rides at the fair when I was a young boy because I liked excitement. Well I can tell you this is going to be one hellacious ride. Uh, they, I've never seen a ride at a fair that's going to give you what God's fixing to give you except this ain't going to be too much fun. But to a young boy who's you're trying to use his mind, just like when the earth shakes like that, if you step in the direction that it's shaking, you could walk. But you're going to fall down when it flips over 180 degrees, just like jerking a rug out from under. You'll fall down. <clears throat> but when it goes back and forth and swaying back and forth, if you go with the sway at the moment it sways, you could walk. It'd be kind of like doing a dance because you're swaying back and forth. You go to the left and you go to the right. Go to the left and you go to the right. Go to the left and you go to the right. Go to the left and go to the right. And you could go across the field or something, but you'd look funny doing it. But it'd be possible. And it's a challenge for a young boy. And there'll be young people who'll, dip, who'll remember what I said when this happens. And I want you to. Now the magnitude of all this. Now why you don't see this happening at the same time the earth is going around the sun at a thousand miles an hour. Now while this doesn't seem like shaking you very much, notice when you take a curve in your car and you say you're going 40 or 50, 60 miles an hour and you take a curve, what do you feel? You're always thrown in the position of that curve. If you're turning to the left, you're thrown that way. If you're turning to the right, you're thrown the other way. You can feel your body sway. Imagine going 1,000 miles an hour and make this kind of motion. Because you're going, the property of inertia is going at 1,000 miles an hour in a straight line, and all of a sudden you start going left and right, 
left and right like a drunken man on the earth's surface. It's going to be throwing you every which way. It will be one hellacious ride. Everything's going to come down that you visually see. Now I can tell you what people should be in. If you're in something like a tent, pointed, something light, it will tend to stand up. Even if it fell down on you, it wouldn't hurt you. But it'll tend to stand up because it's so light, it'll move. It'll move a lot easier than you'll move with that motion because it don't weigh as much as you do. You know, a small tent. You go back to what our forefathers used to stay in many times. The Indians lived in them when we came on and on this and invaded, invaded them. That was their homes with tents, and they did very well. So you know you could live through that. Big buildings and stuff that violates the laws of lovers and the property of inertia are going to come down. All that man has built and all his glory, it's going to come down. Because they, in their arrogance, to stop the energy invention, did not master these other things that God's gave me. He's gave me all this knowledge. I'll tell you how I started warning you all when I published this book in 1984. <clears throat> It should be apparent that these varying star alignments will induce some type of sunspot activity into the central force of our galaxy. The electromagnetic output of the central force will vary according to such varying star alignments and such varying output will affect the sun's rate of total conversion of matter into electromagnetic energy. I published that in that book in 1984. <clears throat> I said our sun and other stars will be above or below the equator of the central force of our galaxy and the polarity of sunspot activity within this central force will reverse as it does with our sun. I warned about this. God Almighty has given me this knowledge that it matches exactly what I'm going to read to you out of the God's Word. I warn, because of stellar alignment within our galaxy, there will be periods of time when the total conversion process of the sun will be strengthened to the point that planets will trigger sunspot activity of greater intensity than any for which we have records remembered. The distant stars travel in their particular orbits are immense. It may be uh, where we have nine planets. There's millions of planets that orbit in the our, um, central core of our galaxy. And I said the stars in our galaxy affect the central force of our galaxy and vice versa. So the galaxies affect the central energy which they orbit and vice versa. I, I warn the scientific facts of history verify that in the past the earth has experienced extreme catastrophes. It is a reasonable prediction that such catastrophes will be experienced in the future unless we can prevent such catastrophes from occurring. Simply because the human species exists upon the planet does not automatically immune, immunize us from further catastrophe. I warned you about that in 1984. Now the scientific community uh, was dumbbound by something the same year I published this book. It came out in Time Magazine. The Time Magazine article states, the scientists observed a spectacular feature that has never before closely been observed. A band of gas 10 to 20 light years thick, thick, seemingly composed of lacy filaments stretching up to 600 light years above the plane of the Milky Way. Right here. The article indicated that the observed spectacular figure was art. The article adds, quote, Indeed, the appearance of the magnetic arc was so unlike anything ever before observed in the universe that for weeks its three discoverers refused to accept their own findings. Now that's totally false because you see those curvatures away or around sunspot activity and matter being ejected from it any time and all the t time that the activity has taken place. Quote from these people, Others are now leaning toward the presence of a powerful and mysterious magnetic field as the most plausible cause. Now before this, they ever said everything was gravity. Now they're forced to start admitting truth that I had been saying since the 60s and 70s. The magnetic field, this is their quote, the magnetic field, if it exists, 
defies scientists' motion about proper celestial behavior. Perhaps even more baffling to astronomers, the belt of gas rises up at <clears throat> right angles to the plane of the Milky Way. At right angles to the plane of the Milky Way. And they're dumbfounded. Well, it's a known fact at the, at the poles of a magnet, the lines of force are tremendously greater. <clears throat> it's obvious to me, just as the sun is a flowing mass of gas, of material at, at a phenomenal temperature, everything is melted, turning it turn into a gas. Our galaxy is that, except it's billions of times larger, the center part of our galaxy. Its magnetic field controlling all these billions of stars has to be phenomenally massive and powerful. It's obvious to me matter would be objected in these uh, tremendous magnetic fields because that's what happens on sunspot activity. We'll have solar flare, flares shoot matter from the sun that affects this earth and we noticed it the first time in World War II. It knocked out all radio communication from Europe to America and the U.S. Uh, military was dumbfounded. We got to find out what this is, what's going on. And it happened to be an astronomer who was in the military, remembered a sunspot activity, big solar flare had happened a week or so earlier. He looked up the date and then did the calculations and said that was the cause of it. That's when the government started looking into sunspot activity. Prior to then, nobody was paying attention except scientists who were curious about it, like Dr. Smith. Uh, now I want to show you how that Dr. Smith, who is a person who has got behind this technology <clears throat> big time, uh, way back in the 60s and the 70s, he then started endorsing my life's work. Now he was chief of space environment branch in Huntsville, Alabama. Uh, And I want you all to see these letters. <clears throat> you can see this is from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, George C. Marshall Space Flight Center, Marshall Space Flight Center, Alabama, NASA. June the 22nd, 1976. It's from Dr. Smith to me. And this is this quote. I have read your article several times. Believe that it is very worthwhile and that it should be studied in much more detail. And he tells me about the work he had sent me to me that I told you about Huntington. I'm sending you a Xerox copy of several pages of a book by Huntington that should be of great interest. It contains some of the data we discussed about inclination of the various planets' orbits to the elliptic. It also contains much information that supplements and complements your work, my work. I have not read the entire book, which, as far as I can know, can only be attained from the Library of Congress. This man acted as a scientist should act. He concludes it once again, thinks you should continue to expand your efforts as it appears if the results should be very significant. Robert E. Smith, Chief of Space and Arvo Space Environment Branch, Aerospace Environment Division, Space Science Laboratory, Huntsville, Alabama. This letter here from him is in 1979, three years later. We're still conversing on a very friendly and very scientific basis. And he states in it, um, Mr. Joseph W. Newman and I have been corresponding about his revolutionary concepts of magnetic fields for the past several years. I have not seen his experimental setup, but if his write-ups <clears throat> of the procedures and results are correct, then several laws of physics may need to be re-examined. <coughs> Excuse me. If the matter, manner in which Joe conducted his experiments and results were made known to the industrial or engineering communities, <clears throat> then in my opinion, several companies and our individuals possess the expertise and capabilities to construct the hardware required to fully exploit the apparent capability of his new concepts. Robert E. Smith, 1979, three years later. <clears throat> the world did nothing. Even though his statisticians have already showed you, said that I was right here, the chance of me being wrong was almost totally impossible. Showing the Earth's true axis as a result of the Earth's magnetic axis is warping out of space it aligns with the sun. And I've told you all that in the, already. <clears throat> I want you all to listen to this, not for my benefit. I've screamed and hollered for years. 
I just wish to talk to you in a way that I hope that you can appreciate what I've tried to do for y'all. Now keep in mind, right here, these scientists were dumbfounded about what they saw of this material being ejected at right angles to our galaxy's plane in the Milky Way. And they're dumbfounded by it. And then they start admitting it looks like it's some kind of electromagnetic effect. Dr. Smith and I have been talking about that since 1976 to 1979. This is in 1984 this is written. <clears throat> now I want you all to hear what God has to say about it. And I've got a chapter about God up on Google that you can pull up and see, and I recommend you all see it. <clears throat> My birth was a miracle. That's documented on that. All the knowledge I have is a miracle that God's given me. I remember bitching when I was a young man and I'd quit believing in God, which I told you, tell you all about on that program from 1967 to 1984. I didn't believe in nothing but me. <clears throat> but I was bitching as a young man to some business people in Mobile. And one of them who was religious was listening to me and he said, Joe, I want you to think about something. I said, what? He said, except for the grace of God, there goes you. And it made me shudder when he told me that because I didn't want to be stupid. And that's what I felt about the rest of the world I was in. The people were stupid. They acted stupid. Stupid is when you got facts in front of you and you won't look at them. To me, that's stupid. It's like me watching a man pick up a rock and drop it on his foot. And it's crushing it. And he keeps doing it. And he says, no, that rock ain't affecting me. And he's smashing his foot off. To me, that's stupid. <clears throat> if you ignore facts, to me, that's stupid. You're not stupid because you don't know something. Stupid to me is when you got facts, plain facts in front of you, and you just pompously ignore it. To me, that's stupid. Uh, but I even said a prayer at the time I didn't believe in God because I didn't want to be that way. And I didn't believe in God, but it made me shudder so much I made this prayer. I said, God, if you exist and you have given me this knowledge, I am grateful and I thank you. And I meant it because I didn't want to be a person that was stupid. <clears throat> God has given us all a brain. Now, he's made me like a tiger wanting to use mine. What I've seen of people around me is that you don't. You let anybody who gets up in a position of authority tell you something and you do it like a puppy. They even <clears throat> arrogantly told me in the 90s, call me, Mr. Newman, you're a smart person, but when it comes to people, you're stupid. And you better sell us this technology because the people will never wake up and get behind you. Now, God made me a promise when I went to die in Washington, D.C., March the 28th, 93. And I had a miracle occur up there, and God spoke through two different people <clears throat> saying this is his technology. He would bring it forward, and he would use the people's money. <clears throat> At some point, y'all will get behind me. I'm not worried about me. What I'm worried about is you, the people. How far will you be in the destruction before you get behind my life's work that God has given me for you? This technology, just like ark, the ark <clears throat> was <clears throat> a safeguard for Noah and his family. Back when there was a flood, God tells you that he's going to burn the earth. I used to wonder about it when, when I was a boy. How's God going to do this? Because I knew dirt and stuff didn't burn very well. Uh, because I used to set fire to stuff and just to see what it would do. Because uh, I was curious about everything. I understood it, stand everything. And then when I heard about the atomic bomb when I was a young man, I knew how God was going to do it. Radiation is burning. But listen to what God tells you all in Isaiah that matches exactly what I just showed y'all. It's no accident. And this is where God tells you what he's going to do through the earth. It's in Isaiah <clears throat> chapter 13. And around the world, 13 is a warning number from God. Hotels don't have a 13th floor because people know that's a warning number from God. And they won't get on the 13th floor. So if hotels don't have 13th floors, it goes from 12 to 14. This is the quote in chapter 13 of Isaiah. I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. 
I will cause the arrogance of the proud to cease, and I will lay low the horniness of the terrible. I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Oprah. That means most men are going to be killed. That doesn't give me any pleasure. I've tried hard to get the world to change. I went to New Orleans and jeopardized my life's work doing something. God had to make a miracle for me to go because I told him I wasn't going to go jeopardize my work. I grew up with these bigoted people. I knew how they were going to react, and they did. They made a little statement, as Evan said, that uh, they were all going to meet together. They did it one time, never did it again. Well, God fixed it, just like he told me he would do, and I told them. And this is verse 13. I'm reading from 11 to 13. Therefore I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place. Just like I showed you over there. That means it's going to come out of its orbit. <clears throat> in the wrath of hosts, in the days of his fierce anger. God is telling you why he's going to do this. I warned the world about this in 1987. I spent $25,000. I put myself up to ridicule. People do not like to hear bad information. Back in history, they used to kill anybody who would bring bad information, which to me is stupid. It's like somebody telling you, it's a tornado coming. I'd like to know that information because you can get prepared. You don't give up. There's a solution for any problem, and I tell everybody that right now. Those people who use your brain, you stand a chance. Uh... Just like God, I've heard this all my life, and people my age have heard it. God helps those who help themselves. What does that mean? It means use your brain. You got a problem? <clears throat> Solve the problem. How do you do it? Not by just shutting down and saying, well, I just give up, I just give up. That ain't going to solve nothing. You deserve what you get. I don't have any pity for someone who's just going to be arrogantly stupid. You have a brain just like I do. If you use it, God makes you a promise. He will help you. Listen to the words that he tells me that you should do. You shouldn't be in these big high-rise buildings that man be, builds. Go to the first things that God used to have people in, including Jewish people. And now all people lived in tents. Well, isn't it interesting? During a big earthquake or something, that's not going to fall down and kill you. And because they're light, even if they were turned upside down, it would tend very quickly to want to move with the surface of the earth because it's so light. It's like you're pushing a box across the floor or something. It moves very easily. Now you take something heavy and start trying to push it. Well, that's the same amount of force it'll try to sit there with when you move something out from under it. The same force you feel that when you have to push it on the floor is how much force it'll put down when you try to move the floor out from under it. And that's why it'll tear stuff down. God has given me this information. He makes this stuff that's complicated to you people and even to these scientists. He makes it, made it easy for me. <clears throat> it's all been easy for me. Now, what's been hard is to get the world to listen to the end result of it. I've had to scream it. And I feel a sadness now as I talk to you all because I know... Uh, no matter what I say or what I do, it ain't going to change what God's going to do. He's told you right here that I just read you what he's fixing to do. And listen how he describes it through a prophet thousands of years ago. And watch how it matches exactly what I just showed you. I put, as you notice, all these quotes that I've got is in red writing, I mean, this red tape. I did it because that's always a warning. I want you to write down these quotes. And this is Isaiah chapter 24, verse 1. Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty and maketh it waste and turneth it upside down and shall scatter abroad the inhabitants thereof. That means you're going for a ride. And you better hang on, boy, just like I built a, a bike one time, a three-wheel bike uh, that would get a wheelie in front end and come up off the ground. And the kid come over there one day that had heard about it and wanted to ride it in the afternoon. His friend got him on it, and he had on a football uniform. He's, he took his hand and paddled up that 80-pound flywheel. It was above that back 
two wheels, an 80-pound flywheel, had it turned up at a high rate of speed, slapped the boy on the back and slapped it in gear and said, you better hang on, boy, you're going for a ride. Uh, <laughs> scared us too out of that boy. <laughs> boy, it took off in the front end, come off the ground and <laughs> left black streaks on the pavement about that long and he ran over a whole bunch of Zaya buses and then ran into the back wheel of my car and jammed the wheel under it. And I ran over to him and said, son, are you hurt? He said, no, but it scared the hell out of me. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, y'all better hang on because you're going for a ride. And I've tried to get y'all to see this because I care about the human race. It's not because I don't care. I've turned down open-ended money, millions of dollars, hundreds of millions of dollars, to betray you, the human race. And I have not. Listen to what else God tells you. In Isaiah 24, that was the first verse. This is verse 5 of 24. The earth is also defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore had the curse devoured the earth, and they that dwell therein are desolate. Therefore the inhabitants of the earth are burnt, and few men left. <clears throat> In Shinova, History Channel recently had up a program that I know that a lot of y'all saw. And it showed very clearly that only 3% of the radiation has already been uh, leaked out. Still 97% of it is still there and got a whole bunch of crap caved in on it. And they know they cannot inhabit that area. They had more people killed there on something that was not a, used as a weapon. It was supposed to be for peaceful means. It killed more people in Genova, in Russia, than the atomic bomb that was dropped in Japan. And that was supposed to be for peace. Now this is on a device that man built that's less than 1% efficient. <clears throat> and I told the world, God's given me an energy invention that's 100% conversion efficient and it converts mass into energy on a 100% conversion process without any pollution to the earth or the human race. And I've screamed that over and over and over. And thousands of people have came to see me. God gave me $10 million worth of publicity in the 80s. God offered y'all this technology, and you did nothing. It's the only thing that you will tend to be saved with, is if you have the person who has this energy invention. At the time, all these power lines come down. <clears throat> Just on a, a little old solar flare that hit in World War II, it knocked off all radio communications between Europe and America. It overloaded power lines. It blows up tr transformers. That ain't spit compared to what I'm talking about. The induction electromagnetic effect will be a hundred to a thousand times that great within the earth. Now you saw how that magnet danced when I turned that. The earth is going to be wobbling like this, turn upside down, still be wobbling. You think that ain't going to be a ride? I can tell you, and every young person out there, uh, if you got a fighting spirit, it's going to be a fun ride. If you use your brain, run with it. But you've got to be able to survive as well. And I'm telling you, this energy invention God has offered to the earth. If all of y'all right now would send me what you pay for one tank of gas, I could produce this technology. Just in the United States, if the whole world do that, I could produce it for the whole world. The chances y'all doing it, from my experience, is zilts. You'll watch this tape and say, well, uh, he means well, but um, I got my house and I got my kids and they're going to school and I got this and I got that. Well, I'm telling you, before God, that don't cut no ice. Now, all of you who believe you're going, who are Christians and believe you're going to be lifted up, you're not. And I've told people who were Christians and my friends about this a long time ago. That's not in the Bible. Well, they're going to be lifted up when God comes and judges the earth, and they're going to go to heaven. You know, and the guy's going to just lift him up. Well, that's a fantasy of a guy in the late 1800s in Europe who got this in his brain, just thought it up. It ain't from God. It's from the devil because it's not in the Bible. Now, in psychiatry, they tell you about wishful thinking and et cetera and people who can imagine stuff, just like a guy with a, a, a mangled arm. The psychiatrist holds him up in front of him, asks him what it is, and he says, I don't know. And he means it. It's denial syndrome. 
You can wish for anything. Yeah, that's an easy out. I don't have to do nothing. I just believe in Jesus Christ and I'm going to get lifted up. I don't cut no ice with God. He judges you the same way I judge you. And that's how I told people I judge my friends. And I got few friends. Because I judge my friends off what they do. How much blood will they put on the table with me and my life's work for humanity? Those are people are my friends. Not other people. Now, I still like people in general. I don't know why I do except God makes me. Because I give my life for y'all. But it sure takes me off a lot of times. And it's hard for me not to be angry. I don't have to be angered now because I know what's going to happen to you. Um, I'm hopeful somehow you'll see my sincerity. Let me you read the other quotes that a, God had a prophet describe to you so exactly. The scientists didn't understand this when it was written. They didn't believe this. I just showed you mechanically how it's going to happen. Dr. Smith, way back in the, uh, 1976 through 79, endorsed all this. And he was chief of space environment branch at Huntsville. They didn't shoot a rocket without his permission because he had statisticians. What was the weather like all over the earth? What's the chances whenever they come back in that they could land without havoc from a hurricane or a big storm taking place? And if the mathematicians said the chances were good, they would shoot. If the mathematicians said the chances are not good, they would not shoot. That was his position. Y'all didn't listen to Dr. Smith just like he didn't listen to me. Listen to what God tells you. It's funny that the things God has had me tell you as a scientist years ago gave me the knowledge for her for you. God tells you through a prophet thousands of years ago that match it to a T. If I was a person who claimed to be religious, I'd look very carefully at this to be prudent. To use your brain. Don't deny facts that's right in front of you. I didn't write this Bible, but I got sense enough to know the gracious thing that God has done by warning us thousands of years ago through his prophet and then giving me the knowledge scientifically to give to the world years before he does it. And just only recently, he gives me the thing I've been asking for for years. When does the sun across the equator of our galaxy because I was reading to you what I said would occur when this occurred way back in 1984 and I did not want it to be caught off guard. Now the science, stupid scientific community was all telling me they don't know. It takes 200 million years for the stars to do our galaxy. Well that's crud. It's obvious. It makes that circle every 26,000 years. The earth holds with the sun's magnetic field. That's why it holds with that position as it orbits the sun. It's got the same tilt to the sun's magnetic axis. That's how it does, just like those bobby pins and everything else do. For it not to happen defies the known laws of electromagnetic induction. I'm right, and the rest of the world is wrong. Now, what is the point of the, all of this? Is the world is going to suffer greatly if you don't listen all the kings and queens and politicians on the world should pay attention to what this tape is because God's going to kick your behind. I'm reading to you what he's saying. Then if you go over to 19 verse, even the bottom part of the 18th verse, a chapter 24 of Isaiah, for the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake, just like that magnet made that globe shake. <clears throat> the earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. Exceedingly. Now you're talking about a ride, you're going to get it. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. To and fro like a drunkard. What did I just show you? And shall be removed like a cottage, and the transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. And it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord shall punish the host of the high ones that are on high, and the kings of the earth upon the earth. So all you kings and all you power brokers who fought me, I don't have to punish you. Because God is going to do it a lot more severely than I ever would. And you know what I have always told y'all. Well, God's fixing to do it. But the sad thing is, the rest of the world will suffer with you. But it's an old saying, 
that you the people who've done nothing, you're responsible, that I was taught as a boy. God helps those who help themselves. You've ch chose to turn down all the knowledge that God's given me. All the dedication. He gave me $10 million worth of publicity in the 80s. I was on Johnny Carson's show. He got the biggest response who had ever been on his show. I was on every major paper in the United States. I was on CBS, NBC, ABC. I could go to hotels and they didn't even want to charge me in New Orleans. I had the key to the city. God gave me a world amount of publicity. People around the world knew who I was. Remember the quote, God helps those who help themselves. God gave me this technology for y'all. I have not betrayed that. I have not sold it out. But y'all have turned it down. You don't have it now because you chose not to have it. Let me read what else God says to you in Isaiah. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as the people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, do honor me. And that means you go to church and you, and you run your mouth. And da, 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 I'm going to do good and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And you make prayers to God, but you don't mean it. Because listen to what God says. With their lips, do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. And their fear toward me is taunt by the precept of men. Because you see what the world has done. And you say, look what we've done. We built all this. I, I don't know if God's there or not. I don't know if, if i got to pray so hard. don't know that this is going to go. Therefore, for, he says, therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among the people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of the wise men shall perish, and the understanding of the prudent men shall be hid. <clears throat> I'm going to finish this up. And I've tried not to show you anger because it, I'd like y'all to understand something is the anger I've always felt is because of the uh, fact of I cared about humanity so much and to show you so how much y'all should read what I had written. Uh, I don't know if I can get this read in that time. <clears throat> But this is the pursuit of truth that I wrote in the back of my book in 1984. As I conclude the final chapter, I feel a burden lifted from my shoulders. In slightly more than two months, I'll be 49 years old. For nearly 50 years, I've deeply cared for humanity and strived to improve the quality of life upon the planet. For over 20 years, I've fought for you, the people. We are now alive and yet to be born. Now, what I'm going to do is, because I want this tape to end quickly here, this shows you how much I care about humanity. I'd like you to take this very sincerely. God is coming to punish the earth. I know that the new Israel is going to be built. This is in the midst of the Gentile people. God is showing me the kind of miracles that this is all going to occur. God tells you there's going to be a child born at this time who's <clears throat> going to be very brilliant. <clears throat> and God will have given him knowledge. <clears throat> and he will uh, also be as refiner's fire before men. It means that he's got a fighting spirit. Where is that person? Because God is fixing to punish the earth. He will come just as God is doing all this havoc among the earth. And the Bible clearly describes that. You people can use your brain or you can choose not to. You can listen to preachers who teach you to teach, believe in hatred and bigotry and biases and prejudice and you're better than your fellow human being. God's telling you you're going to suffer because of it. You've broken the covenant. I've tried to show you that what God says in the Bible matches exactly what I've li lived my life and tried to give to y'all to show you and to warn you about is now fixing to occur. If you sent me just what you pay for one tank of gas now, every person in the United States, I could b start producing this technology. If everybody in the world could do it, I could set up plants in every country in the world and do something I've always wanted to do, make every country in the world energy independent of every other country in the world. I've always felt that I'd do more to bring world peace than all the kings and queens and politicians who've ever lived. I made this tape for you, the people. I've tried not to put any anger in it because I feel compassion for you of what's fixing to happen. Thank you all so much for watching this. Do what you can to get anybody else, news media people, politicians. Get it sent around the world. This technology is what you should have. 
get in tents, start saving food, as your grandparents did. For three or four years in a row, my grandparents, right after the Depression, and I used to watch my grandmother put it, the stuff that she canned that year, she put it in the back. She used what was three or four years beforehand as what we would eat. She always rotated it. That's what you should set up now. People should start that method right now so you would be accustomed to it when it came. There is a solution to any problem. God has given you a brain. You can contact Joe Noffy if you wish to send that money to him in my name. What you would put and, and fill up one gas tank. Everybody on the earth do that. I hope that y'all respond to what God has shown y'all. All that I know, God has given me for y'all. Thank y'all so much. Bye-bye.